Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chumi. I make videos every week to add value to you as I do to myself. I've made many, many rookie mistakes and yet a year on and I'm still here. It may not look as if I flourished much in the last year, but I have learned a lot. To commemorate one year of being on YouTube, I went on Instagram to ask some questions that people had for me regarding this. Let me tell you how this last year has been while I answer those questions. First question was, how did you start and what made you start? To be very honest, I have no idea. I had no clue how to start a YouTube channel. I had no prior knowledge about editing videos. I didn't know how to plan. I didn't know how to prepare. I didn't know how to get content ready for it. I had no network and I had absolutely no idea as to what I wanted this channel to be. Many people had asked me to start a YouTube channel in the past and the answer was always a definite no. But one fine day on the 29th of March of 2020, I suddenly decided that I wanted to start a YouTube channel. So I got my camera out and I started recording something. I was super awkward in front of the camera. I just don't like being on this side of the camera at all. I love being on the other side but never on this side. So I sat and recorded something for maybe about three or four minutes just to say I'm starting a YouTube channel and please subscribe and so on and so forth. And then once I was done with that, I happily passed that video to Lakshman to edit it for me because I didn't know how to edit a video. I didn't know how to use iMovies or Final Cut Pro or any editing software for that matter. That video is so cringe worthy today and I would never recommend anyone to do it. I had no planning, no preparation and definitely no script whatsoever when I first started. How do you feel now after a year of being on YouTube? Um, my emotions towards the entire process has definitely changed. You know, sometimes when we watch a video, we think it's really short and sweet and simple or maybe even quick. Like when you're watching this video, this could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't know how long it's going to be, but however long it is, it takes a lot more time than that. There is a lot of work that is involved before and after filming also. You know, you've got the post-production and the pre-production especially. There's a lot of planning to do, a lot of preparation. Sometimes it requires scripting and then you have your filming. Once you've done your filming, you need to edit it. And then finally, you upload it to YouTube. I've come to realize that I actually enjoy the entire process and not just the final product. Of course, sometimes it's disappointing when people don't respond as well for a video that I've spent so much time and effort in, but it's never the response rate or the number count that really matters. You need to enjoy the journey and that's what matters at the end of the day. Have you figured out which direction your videos are going to be heading? I have a vague idea as to what I want this channel to be about, but I wouldn't say I've found my niche as yet. At the moment, I'm sharing a little bit of my lifestyle here and there and some recommendations and I'm trying to make videos that I struggle with, you know, the kind of recommendations or reviews that I am looking for but I cannot find it online. So those are the kind of things that I'm doing at the moment. What have you learned about YouTube so far? A lot. I have definitely learned a lot of new skills like video editing, lighting, framing, and the entire setup. You know, at the beginning, I didn't know how to edit at all. I've gone from there to learning how to edit on Final Cut Pro and even teaching Lakshman how to do bits and pieces. I did some courses on Skillshare where I learned about lighting, I learned about editing, I learned a little bit more about YouTube and all of those stuff and I'm applying that not only for my own YouTube channel but for church and for other things that I do. I've also learned that amongst the many types of videos that there are out there, I don't like voiceovers at all. I prefer sit down videos like this one, even though it takes a lot more time and effort on my part. And the next question, what have you learned about yourself? Hmm, that's a very, very good question. I have learned that if I'm passionate about something, I will make time to do it and I will definitely learn how to do that. Making a YouTube video is very time consuming. Sometimes all the way from the beginning until the end can take up to 10 hours, especially with post-production like editing and planning itself. But just because I like it and I enjoy the process, I make time to do this between my full-time job, my household responsibilities, my ministries, and even my personal time. Enjoying the process has always been my goal and that's what I aim to continuously do. How has your subscriber growth been since you started? To be fair, number count has never been my thing at all. 
But when I started on the 29th of March of 2020, it was a very slow progress because I made so many rookie mistakes. I had to close down that channel and restart another one and I lost quite a bit of followers from there. But as of the 25th of December of 2020, I had 100 subscribers. And while filming this video today, I have about 160 subscribers or so. This has been a slow growth and a slow progress. But because the numbers don't really drive me, it's a good thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here doing this video for you at the moment. Had I been good at marketing myself, I would have definitely had a lot more subscribers. But I'm just so bad at asking people to watch my videos, sharing my content everywhere on my social media. I just feel bad trying to impose things on people. I don't know. I just, I just cannot sell myself at all. And I'm not good at it. That's not one of my forties at all. But when you think of it, no one can ever start a YouTube channel thinking you're going to have 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers immediately overnight within a couple of weeks. Unless you're a celebrity and you already have a following, then people will want to follow you immediately. But that's truly not the purpose of YouTube, is it? If you're gaining someone's time, then make it worth their while. Don't just start a YouTube channel to sell something or to make money or to gain something out of other people. I've actually got a question or two for you. If you subscribe to my channel, what made you subscribe to my channel and when did you start following me? Did you buy a lot of equipment for this? Yeah, I did. This is really painful to admit, but I did. Not because I had to, but because I wanted to. To be honest, I already had my main camera gear and equipment, but I wanted to upgrade and I believe in investing in yourself. A lot of people say they saved a lot of money in 2020, but for me, it has been the exact opposite. I spent so much money that it's really painful when I do an inventory count to see how much I spent on all of these things. If at all you're interested in my gear, I have a list in the description box to show you what other equipments and the kits that I use. You don't have to get all of these things at all, but I did it because I want to. I believe in investing in yourself, and although it is a hobby, when you're doing something, you have to do it full-heartedly, especially if you're passionate about it. How was your journey in the last one year? It was a roller coaster ride for sure. There were times when I had imposter syndrome. I was thinking, why am I wasting my time making videos? Or why would anyone ever want to watch me? But I've come to realize that that really doesn't matter at all. What matters is how I feel and why I am doing this. It's been eye-opening and it's definitely been a journey that I am proud of. Because when I first started, I had no basic skills whatsoever about video editing or even recording. I used to record one video for that week and then I would sit and scratch my head thinking on what to do for the following week. That happened for a couple of months. But I learned the art of pre-planning and batch recording as well. So what I do now is that I plan everything and then I record a couple of videos at one go and then I would schedule my post every week. Would you recommend someone else to start a YouTube channel? Absolutely. It's not rocket science to start a YouTube channel at all. It's free to start it and it's free for you to record as well. You don't need any kind of high-end gear. You can start with basic equipment, with your phone, with daylight, with whatever you have. What matters is that you keep going. That's all it is. It's such a huge platform and there is room to grow and there's room for everyone to contribute what they have to say. There's only one of you and what you have to share no one else will know. The next question is very similar to one of the previous questions that I had. Have you had a mindset change since starting YouTube? Yeah, definitely. When I first started, I used to be shivering because I couldn't speak in front of the camera at all and I didn't really know what to talk. I couldn't be fluent. I just couldn't be natural at all. But now I find myself a lot more bolder, um, not just in front of the camera, but in person. I am a lot more adventurous. I'm willing to try a lot of different things. I'm willing to be a lot more courageous. I don't think so much or take a step back like I used to before. And this is the biggest thing. I'm far more accepting of myself. I'm usually a very empathetic person. I can empathize for someone else, but I can never do that for me. Every time I record a video and I'm editing it, all I can see in myself is my flaws. I can see my crooked teeth, I can see my big nose, I can see something wrong with my face, you know, some sort of acne or dark eye circles or just the shape of my face or the way I talk, my uh, language or my accent or the flow of my words. I can go on and on and on picking about my own flaws. But I've learned to accept and love myself for 
whatever flaws it may be. Whatever it is that I see in myself is not what other people see in me. That self-criticism has definitely mellowed down a lot. The Bible also says in Proverbs that your gifts will make room for you. I can't help but agree with it. Will you continue doing this? Yeah, why not? Although it is very scary to hit that record button on the camera and start talking in front of the camera, I don't foresee myself stopping anytime in the near future. What are the pros and cons of being on YouTube? There are a few. The pros is definitely that you will learn new skills, you will learn to be bold, you will learn to be a, a lot more courageous, a lot more empathetic towards yourself and love yourself a lot more as well. Cons would be the fact that you're putting yourself out there publicly where you give free reign to people to judge you and to comment on a lot of things regardless of how you try to cover up or how you try to be neutral about a lot of things. That's the one thing that you need to be careful. Don't let other people's opinions and suggestions weigh you down or rather take that as a positive criticism, um, even if it is downright criticizing and commenting on something that you're not happy about. Just try and avoid those things. I feel like I've been rambling along for such a long time. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. So I'm going to end it with this one last question. And I think it's an appropriate question to end with. Will you continue with YouTube after having the baby? Um, and the next question is not necessarily YouTube related, but it is baby related. Are you feeling nervous, excited for when the baby arrives? Um, I hope to continue making videos after the baby arrives. I have no plans of stopping, but I'm not too sure what kind of videos I'm going to be putting out there. I started off with general lifestyle questions organization and just general things, you know, social experiments and those sort of stuff. I don't really want to make it fully baby related videos um, and impose that on you because that's not what you signed up and that's not what I started it off with. However, I also talk about lifestyle in this video and the baby is going to be a big part of my lifestyle in the future. So I'm still contemplating about what kind of video it is. And I'm also concerned that I don't want to be shoving the camera in front of his face all the time. I just want him to be able to live peacefully and not have someone recording his every move or talking about him all the time in front of the camera. So that's one thing that I'm thinking about. But why don't you give me some ideas? What kind of videos do you want to see from me in the future? Or, you know, what kind of expectations do you have from me? And what do you enjoy watching me share? If we're both going to be here, then let's just make our time worthwhile for each other. To conclude this entire video, I've come to realize that it's your journey that matters more than your destination. You can run after your goal as much as you want, but if you're not enjoying the journey or the process towards your destination, you're just going to be miserable at the end of the day. And it's so important to know why you're doing what you're doing. If the answer to that question is to gain something from someone else, then it's the wrong reasons that you've put yourself into whatever it is. That's all I have to share today. I hope this has inspired you, be it to start your own YouTube channel, to put yourself out there, to start something new, to learn a new skill, or maybe even to invest in yourself. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know what you thought about it. I will see you again in the next video, but until then, stay safe and take care. And don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. I make videos every week and you will be notified if you're subscribed. Take care. Bye.